So you want to learn how to code. Why don't you join me in making the world's worst game? Previously, I made a video outlining why I thought Scratch was ideal for adults and children alike to begin coding. In this video, we're going to start the practical lesson by putting together the world's worst game. It might be simple, but it has some programming concepts which are really valuable. What you take from this might be the foundation to your programming journey. Let's begin. Alright, we're going to begin this tutorial by assuming that you have created an account and after you've logged in, you're going to come up to the create button. The first thing we're going to mention is that Scratch runs completely in the cloud. But even so, if you come to the file menu, there are some options to upload to your computer if you've got something on your hard drive or download it if you are traveling to a different device. Let's have a look around the screen. Up here, we have the title of our project. We're going to call ours the world's worst game. This section here with the cat is called the stage. This is basically the graphical output of all of our coding that we do. This is the finished product here. We can enable full screen by hitting the blue icon and then clicking it again to get back all of our coding options. Beneath it, we have our area for organizing the graphics. All of our sprites or characters will be listed here, as well as all of our backdrops. In the middle is the heart of the project. We have all of our available programming blocks and in the middle, we have a place to drag and drop them. You'll notice that they're shaped like little jigsaw puzzles and there's more than one type of shape. Generally, to start your code, you're gonna to need to come to events and pick one of the ones with the rounded top. This is a type of code block that can commence some sort of sequence. You might have noticed up here we have a green flag and a red stop sign, so let's reference this green flag by clicking and dragging it out into the programming area. Congratulations, you have your first block, but at the moment it won't do anything, so let's go to motion and drag out and move 10 steps. You'll see that it tries to snap and when we let go, the two pieces join. Now the most important concept you'll get from this lesson is that computers can only do whatever we tell them. People think computers are really smart, but really there are only a couple of the good things. One is following instructions, two is doing those instructions very, very fast. A bonus is that they never get bored no matter how much you make them repeat simple work. Well, let's test our code. What we're expecting is that when we click the green flag, the cat moves 10 steps. So some of you might be thinking the cat didn't move 10 steps. That's because a computer, like we just said, is pretty stupid. So it has no concept of what walking is because it has no legs. So what we would define as steps with legs, it is defining as movements across the canvas in terms of pixels. I'm going to change the background to one of the inbuilt ones which will help explain this a bit better. Scratch is showing us with this background exactly how it calculates movement. We can see that in the middle is 0, 0, and then we have an X positive direction all the way up to 240, and an X negative direction all the way to minus 240. Our Y, of course, goes up and down, and it goes from 180 to minus 180. Therefore, when we're telling the cat to move 10 steps, it's moving 10 steps along here. This, of course, means that if we tell it to move 100 steps, that it's going to move one of these full grid spaces. If we change this to minus 100 steps, we can expect it to move backwards. Each sprite has a direction and if we hit the little eye next to them, it'll tell us which way it's currently facing. Here we can see the direction is set to 90 degrees, which counts as right. Let's restore it to 10 steps because that's much more realistic for the size of our sprite. Now at the moment we do have a terrible game where there's one button and every time we click it the cat moves a tiny bit across the screen. But I think we can do much much better with this despite being the world's worst game. We're going to come to looks and we're going to explore the programming blocks there. We're going to come down until we find one that says next costume. We're going to drag that out and stick it onto the bottom. Any sprite if you come up to the costumes tab can have multiple frames of animation that it can change back and forth between. You can see here if I manually toggle them that I get a really crude walking animation. What we're aiming for is our scripts to do the same thing. So now when I hit the green flag repeatedly, my cat decides to walk. At any time you can drag a sprite manually to wherever you want it. Now really this is quite terrible because we want something to be automatic. Computers are meant to be programmed, they're meant to follow our instructions. We don't want to hit the green flag every time we want the cat to take a step. Let's take advantage of the fact that computers are good at repetition by coming to the control banner. In here we have a repeat until, and we're going to drag it up and let it swallow the blue and the purple command blocks. 
Before you run your code, it makes sense to work out what you're expecting to see by checking through it. Here we're expecting that when the green flag is clicked, to repeat moving 10 steps and changing costumes. Let's run our code. Okay, not exactly the best outcome here, so let's stop that and drag the cat back to the middle. We have to debug now. Remember how we were talking about how computers are extremely fast at doing things? Well, this is what's happening here. It's processing our turn steps and change of costume as fast as it possibly can. To counter this, we actually need to force it to slow down. So we're gonna drag out a wait one second and we're gonna put it in there. Now when we hit the flag, let's see what happens. You can see that the cat takes one step every second. I think that's a little bit slow, so let's change the variable for wait one second. From experience, I know something like 0.3 is pretty much spot on here. Okay, our cat is moving a lot better, but we still have the problem that it doesn't realize when it's hit the edge. Well, of course that's our fault because we're missing something key in our code blocks here. Let's stop it, move the cat back and examine. When the green flag is ticked, we've told it to repeat until move 10 steps, next costume and then wait. If I come up to a stranger in the street and ask them to repeat hopping on one foot until something happened, but I didn't tell them what that something was, they'd be pretty confused. Scratch is the same, so what we really need is something with arrow pointy edges to fit in this block here. We'll find these type of blocks under the sensing banner. You notice they have the same pointy edges as our cutout here, so we know we're onto a good thing by putting one in. What we're going to do is put in the top one that says touching mouse pointer. Now if we run the code, the cat will walk, but as soon as we put the mouse there, our code is finished. This is because we've told it to only do these steps on the inside until we're touching the mouse pointer. So as soon as that happens, this sequence of code is finished. What's probably a little bit better is that we change the option to be the edge of the screen. Let's try that. Excellent. One subtle thing you might have noticed is that while your code is running, the active block is highlighted in yellow. Now when it hits the edge, it's no longer highlighted in yellow. This is a great thing to look for when you're debugging if something's not quite working how you expect. See if it's active or if it's already finished. Let's drag our cat back and let's add something else to this. What we're going to do is recognize that the cat has hit its head on the edge of the screen and we're going to make it play a sound. So we'll go to sound and we can see we have something here called play sound meow. What we need to do is drop this onto the end of this code block because we know all of this happens until it hits the edge and after this loop is complete, it'll then go on to the next one and start doing what it asks for. Let's bring it a little bit closer to save time and test. Excellent. Our game is really coming along and it's just as terrible as I promised you. Next thing we're going to do is come up to motion and we're going to add one more script. At the moment we've done the move command to move around the screen but there's also a nice one called glide. We're going to drag up the longest glide one second command. We can see here in the upper right that Scratch is telling us the current position of the sprite. What we're going to do is change that to 0, zero the very center of the screen. Let's test this out. Okay, this worked exactly as we planned, which is very satisfying. If you ever do make a mistake, it's probably your fault. Scratch is a pretty robust piece of software. It's been around for many years and I imagine all of the bugs have been ironed out. Once again, I can't stress the importance enough of reading through your code and seeing what you expect it to do versus what it actually does. If you've got a problem, it will be identified using this method 99% of the time. So that's it. Our world's worst game is finished and if we did any more, it might not be the world's worst game. What we have an example of here is sequential programming, where we start with a single origin and everything goes down a list until it's finished. The loop is slightly more complicated than that, but the fact that there's only one way for the code to start and end is indicative of how simple this project is. Give yourself a pat on the back and start to think about the next thing you'd like to learn to extend yourself. Every journey starts with a single step and that was our first into coding. In future videos, we'll expand greatly on Scratch's capabilities. We'll firstly cover the key concepts and then we'll start to put it together with some really cool games. See you then. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.